or um, even bring friends, bring, let, let people know if they need a touch from the Lord. You know, Jesus knows all about us. There may be things we don't even realize we need gone in our life or um, renewed, but you experience him, him in the water, and it, it's amazing. All right. Yeah, see here. Okay. Every move for me <laughs> has been super emotional. <laughs> From the park, from leaving the park to leaving the youth center to coming here. Now we're getting ready to leave here. You know, tonight's the last night of the water immersions here in this place. Never will be here again unless the Lord puts a big pool in this whole place. We just buy this whole place and just put one big swimming pool in here. So if you want to come tonight and experience that, I believe something special is going to be here tonight. God's going to show up in it such a different way tonight and um this tonight is our 23rd month so next month we'll celebrate two full years of hosting the water immersions on our own does it seem like that two (laughs) years you know i'm just thanking god he said do it once a month pastor todd and a lot of churches are doing it weekly and it's just not what we're called to do right now so it may grow into that at some point but we're just happy it's once a month and happy to see how god's moving yeah you good? Yeah. I love my wife. Do you still have a reason to praise this morning? Yeah, you do have a reason to praise this morning. He is good. He is good. He is good. Let's stand and read the Word of God. We're going to be reading today all the way through what we're reading is from the message, but I'm going to read this first scripture while we're standing. This is in Romans 15:5. It says, may our dependable, steady, warmly, personal God develop maturity in you so that you get along with each other. As well as Jesus gets along with us all. Father, we just thank you this morning. That we are maturing, Lord, day by day. Week by week, month by month, year by year. God, we thank you this morning that that we haven't arrived, but we're going to. Each one of us is growing at a different pace. Father, I thank you this morning that we're going to have patience with one another. We're going to see the good in each other. And we're going to stop tearing each other down. We're all created in your image. Therefore, we were all dreamed of before the foundations of the earth to be amazing sons and daughters. Some of us have not fulfilled that call yet. But as we press in, as we do the things we're called to do, as we do the things that you have taught us to do in your word, through those things, We will reach the people we're supposed to reach individually and collectively. That they would find you. They would find peace. In the midst of a world of chaos and confusion. So I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, you can sit down. I learned how to say that you can sit down. I did two weddings and I didn't let them sit down at either one of the weddings when I did the whole thing people were standing up the whole time and, and Shelly's like and I had no idea what she was saying but um, that's why I don't do weddings I don't do funerals either just so you know don't, don't like to do either one I will though if he has me to you guys good today we're just going to kind of we're just going to kind of tweak up a little bit you know last week we talked about getting low staying low being on our face to see his face And today I want to talk to you about how we are reacting with one another, how we are developing our lives with one another, how we are seeing one another. When I was first called to bounty hunting, Mario Morella come from California, stood me up in the midst of a group of 400, 500 people. I was the only one he gave a word to that day. And he said to me these words. He said, sir, would you stand up? And I'm like, 
Me? Yeah, you. Just new to some of this stuff. He said, I have a word for you from God. He said, the Lord is going to send you to minister to dangerous people in unusual places. I had no idea what that was. But as I pressed into him, as I pressed into Jesus, he showed me I was going to be a bounty hunter. So if you never met a bounty hunter, now you have. Hi, my name is Jason, former bounty hunter. But because I pressed in to his face, he showed me what I was going to do. How I was going to become the thing that he said I was going to be. How I was going to become the thing that he dreamed of me to be. And in that, he said these words to me. He said, I never want you to see the people how you see them. Because I'm getting in front of me a rap sheet. Shelly got to see some of them. A rap sheet that's a mile long of everything they've ever done. Every crime they've ever committed. And Jesus is saying to me, listen, don't look at this. Look at it long enough to prepare yourself to go. Because I had to go with guns drawn at times. I had to take teams at times. I had to kick doors in at times. And it was scary at times. But he said, I want you to always see them how I see them. Because I dream them to be amazing sons and daughters. See them how I see them. Treat them with honor. Treat them with respect. This is my first time encountering these people. And I wanted to love on them. Yet I had to throw them to the ground at different times and put cuffs on them. And tell them where they were getting ready to go. Yet I had the love in those circumstances. So for my safety, I did what I needed to do to get the thing going. But as soon as I was done, I stood them up. And I said, listen, this is not who God called you to be. I would tell all of them this. You are amazing. And God has created you to be amazing. Because of your life circumstances, because of the things you've been through in life... This is why you are where you are today. And I would ask them a question. Do you want me to take the cuffs from the back to the front? They generally would say yes, because it's uncomfortable having the cuffs in the back, especially riding in a car. So I would bring the cuffs back to the front. And then I would say, would you like to go grab something to eat and talk about Jesus? Or do you want to go to jail right away? Pretty much every one of them. Want to go talk about Jesus. I mean, you, you weigh out the options. And my reasoning was giving them food because I've worked in the jail system before. And I know there's times that you will go to jail. I've been there. And I know there's times that you would go to jail and you might not eat. It might be right after mealtime that you don't get to eat if it's night, even to the next morning. So I knew that I was getting ready to take them and put them in the circumstance that they might not have food. So I wanted to provide that for them before they went. That was my heart in that whole matter. And I still today see people how Jesus sees them. I get aggravated at myself. And today even I've aggravated at myself. There were so many times a message I'm going to talk to you about this morning. If I, have, if I get time to get it out. I got 15 more minutes. But God kept pointing things out in me. That he wanted me to correct in my thinking towards people, towards situations. And so I was like, ouch, amen. I don't know how many times this morning. Ouch, amen. Ouch, that's a good word. Thank you. Amen. Ouch, that hurt. Amen. But I want you to know this morning, we all have value. And I want you guys to start learning how, as well as myself, I'm preaching to myself as well, to learn how to bring out the good in everybody. Speak out the good in everybody. I know behind scenes you're going to sit and you're going to talk about some things. You're going to have to discuss things, why this is going on, why this situation is happening, why are these people doing this. And you don't even really have to do that. We're people and we do that and it comforts us for some reason. You know, we can go to Jesus and ask him the same questions. He's going to give us this, the answers that we really need. 
But sometimes we need to lean on people when he's put us together to congregate together. He says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. To glorify him was the main reason for that. But we can come together, we can talk about these things. But when you see something on someone or a fault, come together and pray for them and not talk about them. Don't do the so-and-so did this. Oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Or make that phone call. You'll never guess what so-and-so just did. Let's don't do that. Let's learn how to shut those calls down and redirect the conversations to him and what they are in him, what they can do for heaven, what they can do in their family, who they are, whose they are. Let's redirect those conversations to bring out the good in everyone. Because there is good in everyone. My brother here, Superman. Superman. I remember how many times I prayed for you, bro. Here you are. How many times she's prayed for you. How she got in the water for you. Because I said, why are you getting in the water? Because of my dad. I want my dad to find Jesus. Now, I remember she got home late that night. Am I correct? And where was dad getting himself cleaned up? That very night, waiting on her to get home. So he could tell her that. She'd already prayed for it, already set the ground, and God moved. He's had ups and downs since that moment, but she kept pressing in. Thank you. You kept pressing in. Thank you. That wasn't even my message, but here we are. John 16, 31 says this. He's talking to the disciples, and Jesus said to them, Do you finally believe? He asked them the question, Do you finally believe what I'm, what I'm saying to you, what I'm doing for you? In fact, you're about to run for it to save your own skins and abandon me. But Jesus said, I'm not abandoned. Why? Because he has the Father. You're not abandoned ever because because of the Father. You might have banned Him. You might have walked away from Him, but He won't walk away from you. You might shut the door on Him, but He won't shut the door on you. Why? Because He sees the value in you. He sees you reaching that next lost soul by your testimony, by what He's put in you, by what He's bringing out of you. He sees that. We need to see that in each other. We need to see that in ourselves even. Learning to forgive ourselves. When you walk away, you're not abandoned by him, but you are abandoning really the things that he has for you. You're abandoning the things that he has in your life. Got a text this week from an individual. He said, Hey, I want you to take me off of the tithe. Okay. The automatic. Okay. Any, any reason why? Yeah, because you guys believe in Bill Johnson and Bethel Church and Elevation. Brandon Lake who come out of Bethel. A person who walked in and got healed at this place in the water by Jesus walked away because they don't agree with someone else. They're abandoning what God has for them. Let's don't do that. Let's stay in the fight. It's almost done. It's almost over. Listen. We're in the last run of it. He's coming. I think we're at the end of the soon, rather the beginning of it. 
You can see it all around. If you know the signs, the, the, the world don't know. The world's not going to know the signs, but you'll know. If you're digging in, you'll know the signs. He'll show you. And he's showing each one of us. There, there, there's, there's a day coming, and it's coming quickly. Jesus said, the Father is with me. I have told you all these things so that you trust me. You will be, when you trust me, you will be unshakable and assured and deeply at peace. I want to be at peace every night I go to sleep. Actually, I'm running every night in my dreams, running for Jesus. I don't know where he's taking me, but man, I know I'm not, I'm going places at night. That's the best time to be out and about doing things. I think maybe we probably ought to switch our little habits and maybe we ought to sleep during the day and be, be up at night doing all the prayer and stuff. 3.30 in the morning when the enemy wants to work the most. Let's all get up and set our clock for 3.30 and get up. Pound on the enemy some. Throat chopping. He taught me how to do that in the police academy. Don't mess with me. I'll throw a chop you. Yeah. No, I won't. I will if I have to, but I don't want to. He says this, but take heart. I have conquered the world. Even though there's godliness in the godlessness in the world, I have conquered it. Victory is his. And if you're in the kingdom realm, victory is yours. Our circles need to stay small, like Nate said. His circle is so vast and so big. Why? Because everybody's in one accord in that circle that he's grabbing a hold of. That's what we should be. We have to keep our circles small because we get people outside of that circle who's going to come in and bring discord in our little bitty circles that we can't even keep in unity. (laughs) They can grow, but keep them small until you get that unity. Grab one more in, train them up, raise them up, let them be in there. Train them up, raise them up, grow grow with it. Hebrews 20, Hebrews 10, 22, 25 says, so let's do it full of belief, confident that we are presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keeps us going. He always keeps his word. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging Love and helping out, not avoiding worship together, congregating together, as some do, and they do. Today they have whatever's going on. Some's legit, just whatever. We'll just let them be, let everyone listen. If they don't show up today or tomorrow, love on them, pray for them, be there for them, doesn't matter. Let God get a hold of them. Let God deal with those. Let's don't tear them apart because they're not here. They're just not. We don't know why. We don't have to know why. You know, we probably got 50 people missing today. Or there. I don't know. And I don't really care. I care about doing what he says to do. Serving him. Serving you. That's all I care about. And he says here, especially as we see the big day approaching. It's coming. Second Thessalonians 5, 9, 11 says this. God didn't set us up for an angry rejection, but for salvation by our master, Jesus Christ. He died for us a death that triggered life. Whether we're awake with the living or asleep with the dead, We are alive in Him. We are alive in Him. That's something to rejoice about. That's something to rejoice about, that we are alive in Him. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you will be able to, together in this, where no one is left out. No one is left behind. None should be left out or left behind. I know you guys are doing this. Paul says, I know you're already doing this, but just keep doing it. 
And if you're not, learn how to do it. That ain't even my message today. This is my message. Come here, Shelly. You got a minute? She does this to me down there doing this. In Matthew 7, 1 through 5, it says this. It says, don't pick on people. Jump on their failures. Criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want to be treated the same. How many of you want to treat, be treated that way? How many of you want someone to just constantly pound on you? Narcissistic, pounding on you. Telling you all your faults, your failures, where you're doing wrong. I was thinking of it, you know, I've had some people walk in the building already over there and go, well, this ain't, this ain't right. And I'm like, well, this ain't done. <laughs> Wait till it's done, then you can judge it. But none of us are finished until we get there. Therefore, we're not done. We're still being molded and shaped in the way that he wants us to be molded and shaped. In his glory, in his way. It says this. The critical spirit has a way of boomeranging around. It's easy to see. Look, look at this. It's easy to see the smudge on your neighbor's face. It's easy to see other people's problems. The things they're going through. The, just all the silly stuff. It's easy to see that. And it's easy to get judgmental of other people. And when you do that, you walk out of the will of God for you. I mean, look at that. I mean, would you just look at it? I mean, would you just look at it? But you know, most people are like this. Most people are like this. They got it all over themselves. They got it everywhere. And in that, it says this. It's easy to see the smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly smears on your own. It's easy to see theirs. You're like, I ain't got nothing wrong with me. Oh, yeah, you do. But, but because I'm preaching this message, I'm not going to point that out. <laughs> Unless you ask me to. Then if you ask me for advice, then I'm going to give you advice. And it's going to be good godly advice because I'm going to go by the word of God and what it says about you and who you are. But I mean, I don't even know this is here because I'm seeing that. <laughs> is it bad? Is it noticeable? Yeah. I'm good. I don't, need, I don't need that, Jimmy. I want to show you something. <laughs> Thank you, though. What, what a servant of God. It says this. It says, it says, do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face? When your own face is distorted by the contempt? Is this the whole traveling roadshow mentality all over? I love his virgin. I mean, this is, this is awesome. I think I'm going to start reading out a little bit more. I can't even do my thing here. You didn't know you could do that, did you? So... Wipe the ugly smear off your own face. So just wipe it off your own face. This is, this is like real good, good high-end stuff here. Wipe the smear off your own face. It's good stuff. Before you try to offer to your neighbor a rag to clean their own face. Thank you, Shelly. Let's clean up, guys. Let's stand up. Two minutes over. Let's stand up. Let's do this. Let's clean up our own lives so we're able to step into someone else's life and help them clean theirs up. But even in that, it's only on a volunteer basis that they ask you for help. If they don't ask you for help, you can't help them. 
because then you're putting your will on them. Some people will do things. I remember when I was in the holiness movement, I remember that, that I, would, I would wear long sleeves, but it's only because they asked me to. I would do certain things, but it was only because they asked me to, and I honored the church, the body that I was at. Didn't agree with it, but I only did it because they asked me to. But when, when, when someone asks you, because Holy Spirit's moving in them, they're saying, can you help me with this? Then it's game on. You can preach the word to them. You can, you can help them with everything they have desire to. And it's going to stick because God is in it. We start pushing our agenda on man. It'll stick for a moment, but just for a moment. When God does it, it sticks forever. So I have and am washing my face, keeping myself clean, keeping myself in between it. altar in the game. And I want to build a team that's here for all of you. That's my heart. We're not going to get it right. Always. When we do mess up, that's when you step up. You don't step out. You don't step away. You step up. I'll close with this. There's so much going on in my mind right now, in my head right now, the timeline of things right now, the crunch. I literally, I literally had to go in the back room and leave everyone and break down just for a moment. I mean, I literally felt like I was at a moment of being crushed. And I went back and I just lifted him up. And I thanked him for everything that he was doing. I thanked him for all the the good things that I was seeing done, the good things that were happening. And I got to breathe a minute. He got to show me what he's doing. Just a little bit more of it. He just showed me little by little. He won't show me the whole plan. He just gave me little bits. I get to see a little bit of it. It's going to be amazing. Just hold on. Hold on a little longer. I literally, I'll tell you, I get days I just want to quit. If you've ever been in a pastor's position, you, you, you might know what I'm talking about. It's pretty tough sometimes. As Uwe and them said, my four-hour week that I put in. Yeah. Four hours. So thank you guys for trusting us with this ministry. If you get a chance to come tonight, come get in the water. Let Jesus, like Calgon, melt it all away. All your troubles, melt it away. Become what He's called you to be. There's a world waiting on us. There's a city out here waiting on us. There's a new church coming in town, Emmanuel. It's a branch off a church in, in uh, Greenwood. We welcome you. We welcome you. If you're watching anything that you need from this congregation, we'll be there to help you. It's what we want to be. Randy and Carlene have a class that they have. It's called Higher Ground that they run. They have some classes coming up. If you guys want to be a part of that, talk to them. They'll show you foundations on prophetic giftings, learning how to operate properly. We have Caneo, which is our discipleship program pretty much an in-depth study of the Word of God. Pastor Karen has done such a wonderful job putting this together. And so if you get a chance to join that, do. It's all good stuff. So thank you, Jesus. Let's pray.
Thank you, Jesus, this morning for your people. Thank you for hearts blazing more and more for you. We glorify you. We magnify you. If there's anyone that needs to pray, come and pray. Listen, I don't want to ever leave the altar unopened. If you're struggling, you're battling, come and pray. If you need anything, come and pray. We'll give one moment for that. Anyone need to pray this morning? Anyone going through something, just need to give it to Jesus. Lay it down, give it to him. He wants, he wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to create new things in you. Expand your horizon on who you are. He's got more for you. You were created for so much more. So much more. You were created for so much more than where you are now. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? 